When did you first come across Ultravox? Uh, I, got, I got into synthesizers in my own right. Um, immediately went out and started looking for other electronic type things and uh, found systems of romance. Um, went, to s went to see them, I can't remember where, your marquee probably, normally the marquee. Um, loved it. I, I don't know if I bought all, all their albums at the same time or just systems of romance, but it was um, it, it was a, a really important record for me. It was light years ahead of anything else that I'd heard at that time. You know, mixing electronics and conventional instrumentation. Um, it became the standard for me, you know, the standard to, to aim at. Mm. And uh, just thought it was just the most brilliant bit of music. It's years ahead, years ahead of its time. And they seemed to be do to have been working on that kind of in isolation. There wasn't any electronic movement as such. Yeah. Um, they were just out there on their own. And, and I think Sisters to Romance was at like the third album. Mm. So you know, they've been doing it for a bit when I found them and uh, quite experienced at it by then. And then I went to see them and uh, live it was even better. And John Fox looked great on the album cover and was even, even better to, to watch. You know, it really, one of those sort of genuinely enigmatic sort of people. And I remember I was sort of quite, um, I thought it was brilliant and also intimidated at the same time. You know, one of those sort of people that you wouldn't know what to say yeah. when you met them. Which I didn't. <laughs> when I met him, so it was a, uh, it was, it was great. Probably the most important band of my life right up until, I don't know, ninety mid nineties with the, the Depeche Mode thing came along. And did you like? I mean, did you go back to other stuff like Young Savage? Were you, did you hear that stuff? Hiroshima and one yeah, more yeah, yeah, yeah. My Sex and all that. Yeah, well, My Sex and yeah, oh, yeah, absolutely. I checked. I, I had everything. You know, I, I ch checked everything out. I went to every gig they did in London around. I was I was at everything. I've seen them lots of times. Um, this is all John Fox Ultravox. I mean, yeah. I never was, was really that bothered about the other one. Um, but yeah, no, I, whenever they played, I I, I I I would go and see them. It was it was my favourite band for, for for all through that period, and and to this day I still think of that in that era. Um, out of all of us, they were by far the best. You know, me, Human League, any of us, I think Ultravox were head and shoulders above all of us. Did you meet John Fox then only after y you got famous, was it? No, no, just after I got famous. So somebody said something right. in the music press, a journalist said something nasty, and John worded a letter which we, which we both signed. I don't think I even met him even then, actually. <laughs> and we're just proud to be a part of it. And I've always been... I probably would be even now. I, I would be slightly nervous about talking to John. First of all, he's highly intellectual, <laughs> <laughs> and uh, and I still have that thing. Yeah. I still I've still got that. I'm in the audience and I'm looking up at him, and and he is. He was you know Ultravox were groundbreaking. Ultravox genuinely did a lot of the things that I get credit for, and and I. Not that I'm embarrassed about that or anything, but I mean, he is genuinely highly creative and highly inventive, and and I've I've always felt like the young pretender still do, really. I mean, you've said you felt Ultravox didn't break through because they didn't get the image right. Was that how you? Yeah, I do. I I thought of that at the time, and I, I think there's quite possibly a lot of truth in that. Yeah, that was my. That's that's what I felt at the time. I remember seeing them because they got our to test as well, mm. and th the way they looked and the stuff that they sang about, it didn't work. And John Fox was a very interesting looking bloke, and he was a really really good front man. And and I always felt that if there'd just been a little bit more thought put into presentation, then it would have just struck all those chords that I did w when I come along. And I'd say. So, I thought then that that was the one thing that they didn't get right, and probably the one thing that stopped that particular incarnation of Ultravox from, from doing far better than it did. You know, it's quite possibly that's absolute rubbish, I, I, but I felt like that then, because it was, to me it was the only thing that was, that was missing. It, it, it really was, you know, everything else was perfect. Music was great, you got the, you got the great singer at the front, you know, it looks really good, mm. interesting, you know, very unique voice that could genuinely sing. It had everything, it had everything you wanted, except there was that visual thing. 
didn't quite work. But were you also aware of um, uh, the sort of art side of, of John at that point? I mean, no. he was writing... No, not at all. I, I, no, none, none of that. I was just... I, I just bought the albums, liked the music, went to see them live, uh, and it kind of stopped there, really, and then I carried on with my, doing my own thing. So I, I didn't get into them um, as, like, an obsessed fan kind of way, where I knew all their, their mum's names and where they lived. <laughs> Yeah, you know, what their dogs were called, what their favourite colour was, none of that. I didn't get into any of that, didn't stalk anybody. Um, so no, it was it was kind of basic, I like the music, and it sort of stopped there for me. Is it true also that you went to a party where Billy had the 12-inch version of Dislocation? Yeah, I think that might have been something to do with Rusty Egan as well. There was, there was some, some get-together where, where he had it, yeah. Yeah, I can't remember why that's important, but... Remember at the time, it, it, it's one of those things where you, you suddenly feel part of something which is very very exclusive. Yeah. Before and you always felt like you was on the outside, and now here you are and you're actually there, and yeah, you know, now there's just the, 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 these things which are just like almost like little magical things, you know. Yeah. And uh, like magic tokens of some kind. It just felt very cool to be a to be a part of it. Yeah. I can't remember anything more about it, what sort of party it was or anything like that, but just to be in amongst you know, proper bands with real records. And, yeah. You know, all of a sudden you're in a completely different league to play in the open anchor, yeah. you know, with no record deal, and it just, you're, you're at a different level, and it just felt exclusive and special.